Okay, uh, I think it's time. We can get started. Hello, everybody. Uh, good afternoon. Thank you very much for joining this session. I'm going to talk about function dedicated network deployment model in DPU and IPU like device across the composer disaggregated infrastructure. You see the DPU slash IPU. See the device vendor is competing each other actually uh, to innovate furthermore. My name is Haido Sugiyama. I'm chief architect director. I'm mainly contributing to two committees. One is Open Program Infrastructure Project, which is one of the Linux Foundation Project, as you might know. And uh, the other thing, I also uh, contributing global, well, I'm on Global Forum. The quick question, how many guys know about the I'm on Global Forum? Could you raise a hand if you know about the I'm on Global Forum? Not yet, okay. <laughs> Ion Global Forum was established in early 2020 uh, by the NTT and the Sony and Intel. Unfortunately, at the time that, uh, uh, no, you might know that the COVID situation, uh, we couldn't have the uh, on-site meeting many times, almost two years. But uh, uh, we have a uh, lots of the remote uh, conference uh, uh, to discuss the uh, next generation AI NTP infrastructure technology. And now the ION uh, Global Forum is growing uh, into up to the, uh, about 100 companies uh, joining the ION Global Forum. So through the, my talk, I'd like to use the, about ION Global Forum, what technology uh, we are going to develop. And I'd like to you to understand why OPI, Open Program Infrastructure Project, needs uh, for ION Global Forum technology. We are in the middle of the hardware revolution. We are now developing the new disaggregated computing uh, architecture. We call the composer disaggregated infrastructure with adapting the CXL technology. You might know about the CXL uh, spec. Uh, no, uh, after that, maybe PCIe Gen 5 and Gen 6, we adapted the uh, CXL protocol over the PCIe bus. Because due to the uh, end of a more law, we need the solution to speed the uh, uh, computing processor. So we try to disaggregate the computing infrastructure. So I on Global Forum is try to develop the new architecture called data-centric infrastructure, which adapting the com uh, composer disaggregating computing infrastructure. And parallelly, we see the device innovation. It's most of the uh, uh, device vendor is really keen to develop the DPU type of the domain space hardware device. Because they also know about the current uh, x86 uh, centric architecture is uh, no, uh, one of the issues uh, to speed up the uh, processor. Uh, so we, ally, uh, we uh, address the uh, domain space function to, into the DPU and IPU. And uh, ION also uh, uh, adopting this technology, they call it the uh, function dedicated network. Uh, we, maybe uh, using the function card to build the function dedicated network by like a DPU and IPU. Because of the, we understand that the network uh, function needs more intelligence, not just a simple smart NIC to just offload. There are lots of things that we need adapt uh, function on top of the network workload. So, yeah, 10 years ago, I was busy to develop the NLV in the 4G era. And now we shift into the CNF with the Kubernetes for 5G era. But uh, still not enough, actually, the, for the 6G, the CDPP also uh, feel that the network functionality needs more intelligence. That is also needed the DP and IP type of the functionality to expand the, uh, to increase the intelligence for network and also to support the end-to-end -end computing in addition to the edge computing. 5G advanced edge computing, but uh, it's not enough actually. So actually the IBM Global Forum covered all of the uh, <coughs> um, challenge and uh, also the, uh, we are going to adapt the co-package optics to the functional card like a DPI-PU that 
eliminate that uh, many electronic device, actually. We can just directly receive the optical tra uh, uh, traffic over the optical network, directly the functional card, and convert the photonic to electronics internally in the computing architecture. And also, maybe it's light word or no, but uh, next generation GPU, IPU card, we also see that the UCIE package. That is a new consortium launch in the, this summer. It, this is a die-to-die -die interconnect uh, to increase the uh, performance. I mean, terabit scale of the uh, computing interworking will be available in the UCI package. And uh, UCIE uh, 1.0 adopted the CXL protocol to communicate the existing x86 computing architecture. So that's why uh, I uncovered both uh, uh, innovation, one for the CX-based design computing, and the other is uh, domain-specific hardware and innovation with using DPU and DPU. So this time I like to focus on the DPU and IPU deployment, okay? The reason why that uh, we need Linux kernel supporting the CXL 3.0, still not available enough, that's why um, we are trying to do parallelly working once the uh, Linux kernel is uh, stable for the CXL 3.0, yeah, we can do the POC together with the uh, DPU IPU. But uh, at this stage, most of the DPU card is not available for the CXL because of the Linux, Linux kernel is not available yet. So, so we are now separated working. And uh, first of all, I'd like to explain about what is IMON. ION stands for the Innovative Optical and Wireless Network. We try to eliminate many electric network devices uh, with using the all photonic net with building the all photonic network. But on top of that, you know, still end users need communicating. It's end user cannot communicate over bit layer. They need packet layer. So FDN, functional dedicated network, would convert the uh, photonic to electronics. So we still need the internet protocol to communicate uh, for service. So you see that this diagram, uh, on top of the all photonic network, you see the server, network service. On top of that, uh, you see that the overlay solution. But these are the, the actually the uh, logical view. Physically, these are related in each device. We try to compose the logical, we call the logical service node to compose with the available device like a GPU and DPU and IPU to build the logical service node and to run and, uh, like the Kubernetes on, uh, to, be, uh, to deploy the network service workload as well as overlay solution like uh, HAI inference. So, and the user side, uh, you can, they can see that there's a crowd in environment. But uh, uh, for the internally of the infrastructure, we change a lot of things for the more memory-centric architecture. Not necessary to uh, send a network, uh, many network packet to each other. We just, once we receive the network packet, we try to use memory technology to share the user's da uh, data across the multiple nodes. Because of that, if we, you think about AI deployment, AI needs a user's payload data. They don't need a network overhead. So once we receive, we try to share the user's payload directly with the GPU. For example, the GPU directly is one of the technology. Okay? And, on, and also, uh, we are targeting the, the, this, maybe uh, you can see that, the, uh, yeah, this number. We try to reduce the power consumption and uh, increase the high transmission capacity and the low end to end latency. This number is really aggressive now, but uh, uh, based on the device research engineer, uh, actually the, this is the number is based on the 2030. If we, device, uh, if we know the device, uh, we can meet this number if we change the architecture. If we keep the current architecture, it's not easy to meet this goal. But uh, yeah, so I don't try to change a new architecture with using the uh, uh, current device innovation. So on top of that, uh, what use case I want to try to realize that the, because of the, when we launched the ION Global Forum, first question is what use case? we can try to realize for the 2030 
it's really not easy to you know, uh, survive. But uh, uh, we, uh, 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 there are many uh, cross-industry expertise joining the Ion Global Forum. So uh, many cross-industry expertise must summarize the 10 use case. Yeah. And uh, maybe uh, we, we can uh, I, uh, classify the two type of use case. One is a cyber physical system. The other one, the AI internet communication use case. Uh, and also the key requirement, uh, we summarize the five key requirements. But uh, these requirements are really similar, actually, based on the implementation. Many uh, key requirement is that uh, they need to increase, uh, they need to make a, a low processor latency. One of the big issues, because the, for the network latency, as long as we deploy that the optical uh, fiber infrastructure, it's it opt, uh, network latency equal to the distance latency based on the photonic uh, layer. But even we launch the photonic network, still the problem is the computing latency. Most of the case that when we send the traffic uh, in the current network, there's not much uh, uh, wide bandwidth to send the uh, uh, low capture data. Most of the case, that the, uh, user try to compose or, or compress the data packet to send the cloud. And uh, then that the cloud side to decompress the packet and then start to analyze. So this compression and decompression makes the CPU consumption. That means the uh, more power consumption they spend. So and uh, so I own case, we try to send, we can try to send raw data without compression. So the AI GPU can directly receive the user's raw data to start analyze with AI engine. So we can reduce the processor latency by using the IO. And uh, by eliminating the electronic network device and uh, by eliminate, uh, to reduce the CPU consumption, we can help that activity for net zero emission. That's why the many industries are now keen to know about activities around ION Global Forum. And the same thing for the entertainment side, AI integrated communication. One of the big issues, uh, actually one of the key players in uh, entertainment uh, request us to support a 10 millisecond motion to photon latency for high performance XR. 10 millisecond low, uh, motion photon latency is really hard to uh, realize because of the uh, encoding and decoding takes the time, uh, like maybe less than 10 milliseconds, but uh, that is a problem. So we, with using the raw data, we can send the raw data to directly the GPU memory. The GPU can start the rendering. So we can try to make a 10 millisecond motion photon latency with that mechanism. So yeah, with this IMO technology, we try to make that a performance. So what technology we are now developing is that there, these are slides summarized at the IMON technology. For the fundament, uh, foundational infrastructure side, yeah, open photonic network function activity is uh, one of the uh, main part of the IMON global phone technology. Uh, we build that, uh, all photonic network uh, nationwide, okay? not just uh, uh, local access. We try to establish that uh, uh, all photonic uh, over the 1,000 uh, kilometers. That is one of the requirements. And on top of that, we can uh, build uh, the data center infrastructure. That's, this infrastructure is aggregating the uh, packet to share that the uh, user data directly to the memory space for the guest users. And on top of that data center infrastructure function architecture, we have a multiple workload for the network, what network service provider provides. The data hub is one of the things, and also mobile network, the 5G, radio access network, and the 5G core is one of the things. We can land the uh, container workload on top of the data center infrastructure. And uh, fiber sensing is another unique uh, use case, uh, actually, Still under uh, developing, but it's a very uh, interesting use case on uh, uh, Ion Global Forum made. Uh, you know, fiber cell becomes the sensor. So we can probably in, new, in, new, in the future, we can reduce many electric sensor devices by replacing the fiber. Anyway, 
But at this stage, it's not ready, actually. Yeah, maybe we can explore that the, how we can collect data. Maybe I think the open telemetry project probably might be a good uh, project to collaborate with this area. Still, they have a, a problem to collect, how to collect the data and how to uh, summarize data anyway. And at this stage, uh, we are uh, uh, working on the reference information model for the existing uh, sensor uh, and uh, uh, security device. Uh, and uh, to build the uh, reference information model, uh, one of the current challenges is uh, scalability. Yeah, we have uh, many uh, sensor data collecting from the, uh, uh, each monitored area to the uh, edge, but uh, the problem is the uh, uh, performance, how to analyze. And uh, in the current uh, uh, situation, if we do that uh, compression data, we collect the compression data, so there are lots of the CPU and processor usage we need use at the edge. So uh, challenge is that we try to collect the raw data from the each monitor area to the uh, edge, and using that edge can analyze, uh, perform the uh, AI inference directly with the GPU memory. That is one of the reference models we already made and published. And uh, we are working on the another uh, two use cases uh, for the one is uh, industry management. This is a remote uh, robotics inspection uh, uh, reference information model we are now working. And another is uh, uh, interactive live music. Uh, use case we are now doing. This is a, a how to increase the rendering performance. We are now making the reference information model, still working on. And uh, we can get the uh, QR code. This QR code uh, shows that the URL to download each document, okay? And this slide is uh, one of the main uh, slides what I like to discuss, I like to introduce what is a data-centric infrastructure in the IO Global Forum. So basically, we are adopting the shakespeare based desired computing architecture, but uh, shakespeare server is not uh, available yet, so I cannot say that the shakespeare So maybe we can say that PCI extension bus or something uh, anyway, uh, in the document anyway. But uh, uh, yeah, once uh, uh, Linux kernel available the shakespeare we try to adapt the shakespeare different. And uh, there are the two uh, processor, one for the main uh, CPU, the other is a processor in the DPI-PU, mainly maybe ARM processor for most of the case. Yeah, so we can allow that the multiple operator to manage the resource. One is uh, for the uh, first support, based on the first support CPU, the other is the DPI-PU. So for example, the mobile network operator focus on the DPI-PU management, so without interacting the uh, first OS. That is one of the uh, goal what the Open Program Infrastructure Project is doing. Open Program Infrastructure Project try to create a new common API to, to manage the life cycle manage for the dedicated DP and IPU. Yeah, anyway. So now I'm working, uh, focus on the OPI side. Yeah, if we have, I focus on the, this area, there are many, many solutions actually. Yeah, I've talked about the Kubernetes or well, Open Stack or no. There are many ways to virtualize and uh, resource anyway. So um, what I need, we need to do now is that the DPU, IPU, how we can manage the resource inside DPU and IPU, how we can con uh, interwork with the DPU and other devices like a personal memory device or GPU anyway. So in that area, uh, I, uh, we are now collaborating in Open Program Infrastructure Project. So uh, let me summarize the, uh, what uh, uh, use case uh, we are now targeting Ion Global Forum. Ion Global Forum called uh, Function Dedicated Network. This is uh, actually just a, a uh, one of the use cases in the DPU and IPU, what we can in integrate. So for example, that uh, uh, RDMA is one of the things. Uh, there's many use cases for RDMA. Uh, if we build that uh, data hub, stream hub, uh, we can use that the personal memory with the RDMA. RDMA. And also, uh, 
for the injection node and the AI inference, uh, AI inference over all photonic network. We can also use the RDMA type uh, technology. Try to collect data directly from the remote monitor side to the uh, edge without uh, uh, additional network uh, overhead. We can get the uh, user's data directly to the uh, memory space. For example, the GPU direct is one of the technology. We can collect a uh, transit that the user data directly GPU memory. So the GPU directly analyze the data without interacting with the main CPU. So we can reduce the CPU power consumption in the case. And also another thing that uh, in uh, XR performance is also a use case. It, uh, uh, when we make it a uh, 10 millisecond motion photon latency to increase the uh, rendering performance, uh, we can eliminate the uh, compression and decompression task. We can just receive the uh, raw data directly to the GPU memory for the rendering. And also uh, uh, another use case uh, uh, is a uh, high performance blockchain of RDMA. This is also another use case. And in terms of the other uh, workload like uh, uh, 5G radio access network and uh, much uh, access edge computing, yes, uh, also we can integrate the whole workload into the GPU and IPU. That is uh, uh, one of the uh, uh, Unique point is that the mobile network operator manage at the GPU and IPU directly without a main CPU that needs to share that the resource for the guest user. So we can use the same box but for the two type of the administrator, one for the network infrastructure operator, the other for the guest user operator. I'd like to share that uh, maybe uh, three use cases uh, what we are now working on. Uh, first use case is the area management use case uh, based on the IOM uh, POC reference document. We are now doing the uh, uh, security use case uh, to collect the many uh, uh, video camera data directly to the edge in, uh, ingestion node with RDMA. So usually, if we collected the uh, video data uh, uh, in, uh, I think for example, the 5,000 video camera, uh, uh, the traffic between the ingest and the local aggregation need a 6G. So uh, with using the optical fiber, we can do that. We can collect that the 6G traffic and uh, this ingestion node directly send that the capture data directly to the uh, GPU, and uh, uh, the GPU can uh, perform the AI uh, edge inference and uh, uh, store that the data, result of data to the data hub. The data between the data hub, uh, edge data hub and the central cloud data hub, we can also use the RDMA to share the data over the persistent memory. So the Intelligent application in the cloud side just use the memory to uh, get the data, not necessary to the network protocol at the time. And uh, there's one challenge is that uh, because the, uh, currently uh, in the monitor area, the, uh, we have to collect the 60 gigabps uh, traffic if we, uh, if we aggregate, but it's not easy for the mobile network. Currently, the, we cannot make it. Uh, uh, to transit the 60 gigabps traffic over the wireless access. So, uh, except to that, uh, we can try to get uh, uh, each uh, video data over RTP directly to the uh, uh, mobile edge. Then we can uh, send that, we can decapture the RTP packet to get the uh, user data directly to the uh, GPU memory. This is similar way to the GPU direction to get the user data directly to the memory space of the GPU. It's not necessary to interact the use, uh, CPU uh, processor DRAM. Yeah. So we can keep reducing the CPU power consumption in the scenario. And another thing that uh, 
we establish the front four network and the mid four network by DPU and IPU. So these DPU and IPU are managed by the mobile network operator separate from the other administrator. So with using DPIPU, we can isolate administrator. Yeah. So even though uh, everybody uses the same system, but uh, each guy can isolate the resource each other. So we can keep secure the resource for each. So more easy way for the sh infrastructure sharing service. Maybe mobile, one mobile network, or maybe several net mobile network operators use the same system, but uh, actually each of the mobile network uses the own D uh, DPU and IPU. Maybe in near future, SoftBank DPU and NTT Docomo DPU and uh, Lactin DPU. <laughs> so everybody can use a focus on the DPU, IPU card level, rather than just a code server. The other use case is when we are still working on progress, but uh, I'd like to show that uh, we are also working on the industry management, uh, remote uh, inspection, uh, uh, robot inspection. In the, uh, this is a, a smart plant uh, project. Uh, actually, we uh, use a UAB, which is a drone in the 3GPP name, so, okay? And uh, we provide the reliable access to the uh, mobile edge in the uh, customer site. And we collect the user's data and 4K, 8K video encoding to here, and we can uh, decouple the user data and uh, directly send the user data over the RDMA to the uh, remote inspection site. So, because uh, one of the issues in the uh, industry management is that there's not so many uh, expertise who can uh, Money monitor that the uh, plant. So, then most of the case that the uh, expertise the remote site need to operate. So that's why the, we try to send the raw data to the user remote site for the rendering. And so at the same time that the also we try to uh, make a, a interface communication for the UAB controller to the navigation application. So. One of the challenges is uh, if we use uh, just TCP IP, TCP IP itself makes a uh, uh, distance issue because of uh, TCP IP, they need to uh, check out. So uh, we try to terminate uh, multi-pass TCP IP uh, locally, so no need uh, distance concern, and uh, to send uh, a controller packet to the uh, UA, uh, UAB controller. Then this is uh, just learning that a uh, processor to communicate the uh, uh, remote navigator over shared memory communication with using RDMA. So within the uh, site, uh, plant, a uh, local plant and the remote inspection site, there's no TCP IP connection. I just uh, learn that the uh, IPC communication using the shared memory. So we can reduce the uh, latency in, the case, in, in, in this also scenario. The other scenario, uh, use case I like to share is uh, uh, mobility management. One of the uh, issue of the mobility management is uh, if, uh, if the vehicle move to the uh, multiple uh, cell group, uh, users' data need hand over to the another uh, central unit. There's a uh, uh, not good solution, but uh, uh, with using the ION and using the RDMA over long distance APL, the CPU also can use a, a shared memory communication directly without sending network packet. So once we, uh, you know, uh, this UE connecting the PDC packet here, and if when the UE moved to the another cell site, this CPU uh, connecting the uh, second C, secondary CU uh, over the memory, shared memory. So that uh, uh, even the UE connected here, still uh, CU can keep the uh, same PDC packet here. So that is the one of the solution we are now 
uh, exploring and uh, to keep the more minimum uh, uh, mobility uh, latency. So we are still under discussion, but uh, it's one of the uh, use cases I can introduce here. Yeah. So there are many use cases for the FDN deployment. And uh, we can use the Kubernetes operator to deploy the each workload. But uh, one of the biggest challenges is uh, you see that uh, many vendor have a DPU uh, product. Uh, many vendor, each, each vendor has each SDK. There's no common API. That is the real issue that when we deploy the software on top of the each DPU, we needed a different API. So that's why uh, I uh, uh, realized that issue. And uh, fortunately, Linux Foundation launched the Open Cloud Infrastructure Project this summer. That Open Cloud Infrastructure Project is uh, try to eliminate the uh, vendor lock-in, actually. They try to uh, create a uh, vendor, um, device vendor analytics solution to create a common API. This is uh, one of the main uh, projects, uh, Open Cloud Infrastructure Project. I, I like to spend the time to discuss this, but uh, actually we have uh, another session tomorrow to introduce Open Cloud Infrastructure Project. I like to discuss uh, uh, this uh, topic uh, tomorrow. Anyway, but what, what I'd like to explain why the ION Global Forum needs an open OPI project is here. Yeah, we have uh, Intel and NVIDIA are the member of the ION Global Forum. And uh, actually, uh, this October, we have a first ION member meeting held in New York. I invited an uh, OPI member to introduce uh, this and uh, to discuss how to collaborate each other. There are many. Uh, outcome we can uh, make together, actually. So, no, Ion Global Forum is not the software community. Ion Global Forum try to adopt the latest software. So, we need to collaborate with the many software community uh, to realize a new architecture. This is one of the use cases. Uh, that's why we are now working with the uh, OPI project, okay? So now, uh, ION Global Forum published the seven POC reference document. You can find that uh, each POC reference document, what technology we need to implement. Yeah. Actually, this already published. Uh, you can uh, uh, scan the uh, QR code <laughs> so to get the each document. And uh, one of the unique things the ION Global Forum is uh, we have a non-member program that collaborate the POC project together. So we are very interested in that if the uh, uh, no, software community like to contribute, yeah, it's very welcome to con discuss each defined POC uh, document, okay? So let me summarize. Uh, I am Global Forum is now developing data center infrastructure architecture, which is a composer desired infrastructure. To realize this architecture, we need a Linux kernel supporting CX3.0, actually. Parallelly, we are also uh, spending time to discuss the uh, infrastructure workload to integrate into the DPU and IPU, okay? And uh, at this stage, DPU uh, card and IPU card are not available for the CXL type of the protocol. Uh, protocol. But uh, device vendor is now announcing the several pro uh, devices are supporting CXL uh, spec. So I hope that the DPU, IPU will be available in near future to support the CXL. So far, we use the CXL.io because the DP, uh, OPI uses the SRV. SRV means the uh, CXS.io in the CXS spec case. So we can keep the use of the existing uh, 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 interface, but uh, uh, what I like to explore is that how we can use it to, uh, to share the data across the memory using the CXS to memory spec. Uh, so there are many activities we need to do anyway. 
But uh, you know, we have to do step by step. So we now uh, try to do the POC with the PCI Gen 4, which is not available at the CXL at this stage. But uh, uh, we are trying to integrate a mobile network, barcode, and the DPU, and also RDMA, so type of the uh, application also can be integrated in DPU and IPU. So we now move into the POC phase. And uh, more domain speak hardware like a DPU, IPU uh, type of the uh, use case uh, will be available and uh, it needed. And uh, challenge is the common deployment process. So we are tracking that the open plan infrastructure project for DPU and IPU deployment. Because the I1 is not the software community, we are aligned to the software community to share our requirement to them. So we have a POC project. If you are interested, please join the, the, and also uh, contact the, the, this URL. And you can also uh, uh, scan the, this QR code to connect to that. Uh, and if any question about the IOM POC, yeah, please submit it here. OK, and uh, tomorrow we have a open program infrastructure project session in, uh, I think, at uh, 11.10 a.m. I'm not sure that the uh, room, I, I don't know, maybe, but you can check that, the, you can scan the, this uh, page, yeah. Okay, that's all on my side. Uh, so, you have any question? Hello, uh, I'm Aki from F5. I have a very basic question about ION. So does ION develop any standards or specifications? Excuse me, could you repeat again? Does ION uh, develop standards or specifications? Standard is yeah, a good question. Uh, ION try to make a standard for the uh, next generation uh, <clears throat> AI native infrastructure, but uh, uh, ION serves a standard organization, right? Uh, we have a liaison agreement with uh, many standard body, and uh, we share the idea and the information with each other. So we don't uh, do the same activity what uh, the organization already do. For example, the Linux Foundation that already launched the Open Plan Research Project, we adapt that project. We try to support that project. So not necessary to make a new standard, okay? So it's more like a reference ar architecture yes, utilizing yes, existing yes, standards yes, and yes. technology. And okay. show that the uh, uh, new use case and, uh, prior for the 2030, there are many uh, Cross industry expertise are here in Iowa, so they can uh, appear at the new use case and to help the other community to realize it. So the goal is to realize the uh, new use case uh, around the 2030 to re with reducing the power consumption and uh, to increase the more high power performance. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much.